so <clears throat> last day we ended our discussion over here uh, i said that we will start with a uh, discussion on end to end machine learning project steps so we will start from this point so also i have shown this diagram to you last day like if we discuss about end to end machine learning project steps then it does not mean that only designing a model or building some machine learning model like obviously we have to build some machine learning model for some predictive task but there are many more things present before designing the model and after designing the model and mainly we can divide the whole set whole process into three major steps as you can see over here the first one is called data processing step second we will think about modeling of some uh, you know using the data using some machine learning algorithm and then at the end after modeling we must have a testing mechanism to check how good the model is behaving for prediction right so whatever project you do you have to go through these three steps one by one so let's start with data processing naturally the now under this data processing step i have categorized not categorized you can say i have divided the data processing step further into three more steps so why this division because each and every step has some implementation that also you have to understand which will be useful in future as well so without further delay let's start one by one <clears throat> the first one that you can see here is import data i have written what does it mean it mean that ultimately we are trying to develop a machine learning based model for some predictive purpose now to train the model what we have seen that we have to train the model using some set of data some available data which we call example that all already we have seen in my previous classes the question is that where these examples resides you must have some file where you will have this set of examples so that file can be any file any in any format that can be in a text format that file can be in some csv format or maybe excel format or json file format or pickle file format there are a lot of different file formats present where the data set can be stored so naturally the first step that you have to go through before starting the data processing that you have to import the data in your program from that particular file system now if we talk about suppose data presenting csv file what i have to do i have to import the data from csv file in your python code to some extent you can say <coughs> so how to do this already we have discussed how to import data from our csv file in my previous classes just i'm reminding you a little that is we can use a specific uh, part of python lang programming that is what we call data frame which is present in pandas library right so and if just explicitly i say the what should be the uh, very basic command for reading the data from csv file i can say you can use read underscore csv function of the pandas library 
to read the data. And once this particular comment, comment will get executed, just a minute, it's not visible, why? Okay. So, <clears throat> once the data is imported in the pandas data frame, then we can go further for data processing tasks. So, let's do one thing. We have already discussed this import data part. There is actually nothing in the imported data sub part. It's just about writing the comment for importing data from the file and then we have to go further for the data processing part. So let's explore this data processing part first. What is data processing? Data processing is a process of converting raw data into suitable form and this particular step is going to be extremely vital when you will start building a machine learning model because your model will accept data in some specific format. If your data set, you know, the data set that you will get from your client or maybe someone else, you cannot guarantee that the data present in the data set is in exactly in the form which the machine learning model can accept. That is why before you feed the data into any model, you must go through some set of data processing tasks. So one by one, we will go through what are the different type of tasks and how we can actually solve those issues. So there are three different type of basic data processing we can go through. Okay. As I have already listed over here, maybe other than three, there are many more data processing, processing possible, but just for understanding from the beginner point of view, I have listed these three basic data processing tasks, which is very essential. The first one, as you have seen, missing value imputation, then feature scaling, and then encoding categorical data. So initially, definitely the meaning of this three points is not clear to you, but one by one, we will go through all these points and also I will show you the corresponding Python code that you can use to do these data processing tasks. So let's start with missing value imputation. What is missing value imputation? By the name, you can easily understand that something is missing. Some value is missing. So what I have done, I have created some list of scenarios and obviously corresponding solution that you can go through. And in the left, you can see there are some images given, images of some table. Just assume that this table is representing the data set. Okay. And these three different form of table is representing three different scenarios. So what is the first one? The first one is something like missing value present in most of the row in a particular column. You see, if you closely watch the uh, this particular uh, first, let's do one thing, let's do a pointer, yes. So if you see this first table, in this data set, you have four columns, right? I mean, with respect to the language of machine learning, there are four features in this data set. And among these four features, if you look into the second feature column, you will see that most of the cell in the second feature is basically blank. Blank I have considered as this red dot. And in those cells, there is some data. I have just kept some dots of yellow lines, you see. So just I am trying to represent is like in the second feature, most of the 
data is missing for all the row. So in this situation, what generally we do, we prefer if this particular column is not extremely vital, then we try to drop the column or feature. So this is one scenario. Another scenario can be just an opposite. I hope you can understand from this image itself. That is, it is saying that missing value present in most of the column of few rows or maybe one row. Most of the column means in case of most of the feature. So if you look into this particular table properly, what you can see that for this second uh, object or for the second row, most of the feature is missing. So it is extremely I mean difficult to work with this particular second row. That's why what we do? If this row is not very important, then we drop the row also. Just like in previous case, we drop the features, drop that particular feature from all the row. Here, we drop all the features of that particular row. I mean, the whole row is deleted. There is one more scenario can happen that you can see in the third diagram where you see the blank cells are present in very random basis. You cannot say that a particular row, uh, you know, all the features of a row is missing. Or you cannot say that, you know, for a particular feature, most of the row is missing. So here the cell is missing, the value is missing in the cells in very random order. So in this situation, what we can do, we can try to impute some data within these blank cells by some technique. Impute means, impute means that already you, you can see that the value in this four cells is missing. Rather, deleting those features or the rows, what we can do? We can try to put some value on, in those blank cells or the missing part so that in such a way those imputed value will represent best of the you know of the feature or the data point. What I mean to say is that this assume that first data point in the first row there are two cells which is missing so now in the other rows the cells are not missing so based on some distribution for example if you see the third feature this third feature of all the patterns if you collect the data, then you will basically get some statistical distribution, right? Always remember, if you put some value in this particular missing part, it should not change the distribution of the data. Distribution of the features, not data, distribution of the feature. It should not change. So, based on the statistical distribution of the feature present in the data set, we can try to impute. Now, what is the best, you know, technique we can apply over here? Not, you can say best, but you can say the basic technique that we can apply here. We can try to impute based on either mean of the whole distribution or some median or some mode. And these three are very vital statistical, uh, you can say, uh, some representation of the whole in any data set, right, which represents in a best way to some extent. So, what we can do, let's do one thing, 
let's go to a python code and let's see how we can impute this data using this mean median and mode 